What's up, y'all? What's up? Welcome back to another episode of PS Panic Room. You know how we do on here. You know, we bring guests in, we clown, we have a good time. But before we start the show, I always like to read some of the comments that people leave on different shows. Uh, let's go with, uh, let me see what we're looking at. What are we looking at right here? All right. This is from the Jack Thriller one. My man, Andre Botte, Botte, B-O-T-T-S-E. Okay, he says, now that's a funny interview from the first second to the last. Yeah, I had a real good time with Jack Thriller. You know, Jack Thriller has such a personality, man. You know, he's, he's willing to say anything, man. So we had a really good time with Jack, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you, man, Andre. I appreciate that, Andre. All right. Another one. For, oh, another one from the Jack Thriller Show. Got an Ant Dog 93. What up, Ant Dog 93? He says, I think it would be a great idea to put this tell-all series in a playlist. You know what? I'm going to do that. We have a lot of, you know, the first time I met stories. We got plenty of those, man. We got a lot of them, and I think we will do a playlist of it. All right. Thanks again, my man, Ant Dog 93 All right. Also, we got my man, Marty Mart from the oh, one with the strippers. The show, I mean, we had a stripper show with the strippers. Yeah. Well, Marty Mart says, Pierre, if they are the best at Atlanta, has, I guess, has to offer. Miami still got them best. Okay. Hold on, you gave me a headache, Marty. Okay, let's do it one more time. Pierre, if they are the best at Atlanta, has Miami still got them bets? Beat, got them beat. Okay. Ooh. I ain't gonna say nothing about that, brother. I just appreciate you wrote that comment, man. The way you wrote it, because I read it the way you wrote it. All right, John. <laughs> Woo! All right, this show is going to tell you. This is going to be a, t- a show I can tell right now. All right, this next guest, my, well, my first guest. Ain't no next guest. My first guest this evening is, I would call him comedy royalty, man. The man's been in so many movies. When I started doing research, now, I know the boy. I've known him for years. But when I started having to do research on him, I did not realize as much stuff he did. I mean, this boy done did everything, okay? So it's a pleasure to get him on. It took me a while to get him, so I got him, and he's here now, and he's going to sit back and relax and talk. we old friends. We done did tours together. We hung out together. You guys know him. You love him. He's one of the most lovable pr- people on the comedy circuit, man. Give it for Rodney Perry! That's my man right there. Give it for Rodney Perry. Look at, boy, look at you, man. Have a seat, brother. Have a seat. Yeah, nice. Let's see what you're doing. Yeah, look at him. A little something-something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I got a little I'm, something. Got the I'm couch. a little nervous. That's the velvet. That's velvet, brother. What is this, velvet? Yeah, that's velvet. That's, right. that's velvet. That's real velvet. <laughs> Literally velvet. Right. Now, now, this ain't real leather, but that's velvet. You got the good stuff. I get my yeah. guests the good stuff over there. I take it. I take all it. All right. First of all, man, thank you for coming on my show, for real. First, what my cup, though? Oh, are we no, oh, I thought you wanted a glass of uh, water. What's that water? What's that bottle I got of water? the water. I want a cup. Oh, one of these cups? Yeah, it's oh, man. the panic room joint. Oh, oh, yeah, we low budget, man. That's the only cup we got left. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I can write panic room on a paper cup for you, but <laughs> we, 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 okay. we got one cup to go to all the guests and me. Okay. Hilarious. Love yeah. it. Yeah, but no, it's all good. But have a seat, man. appreciate it, man. We're going to kick the rock. We're going to kick the Willie Bobo, man. Let me tell you, first of all, I you know, know you grown when you say Willie Bobo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I am. That's what, that's what we do. But what I didn't realize is this. I didn't realize all the work you've done, brother. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel you underrated? You know what? Uh, to, maybe to a certain extent. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Rodney Perry is, is a bit underrated. And only because I've seen some of my peers really blow up. Mm-hmm. You know, but you can't judge a man's journey until you know what he want. Okay. And, you know, I think, you know, if, if I want what Kevin Hart got, if I want what Cat mm-hmm. got, right. then I would I would go stir crazy, you know. And so, you know, although, you know, we're all working to send higher heights mm-hmm. or whatever, I'm very comfortable and happy because I do everything through comedy. Okay. You know, I bought right. my house. I put right, my kids right. through college. I, oh, yeah. You know, I own automobiles. I, right. You know, I take care of, you know, my family. Sure. And so I'm winning. And and, and what I had to, you know, be, through life, you learn to just be comfortable in that. Mm-hmm. And although we're still working for a right, bigger right. goal, of course, sure. we want to be world-renowned comedians, sell out everywhere. But, you know, you walk into a comedy club sometime right. on a weekend and there's 30 right. people there, you're right. like, Right. I'm good though. Right, right, right. No, no, it can humble, it can humble you. Yeah. But, but let me ask you, if your journey stopped today, mm-hmm. would you be okay with it? Comedy don't owe me nothing, man. 
Mm. Comedy don't owe me a thing. And I mean, I mean, I, I, I literally tell jokes for a living. Right, right, I'm right. I'm winning. Right, right. Come you know, on, whether it's movies or TV. Now, the irony of, of my journey is that, like you said, I, I got a, a pretty decent film resume. Sure. And sometimes people don't know I'm a comic. I get the same you know, thing. you get the same thing. The people, same thing. people like, yo, man, I didn't even know. And then they come see you like, yo, you funny, yeah, then blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know. Right, mm. right, right, right. It's, it's, the, it's funny how people don't understand how this game goes. Yeah. You know, they're like, you know. Or, like my uncle used to say, or family member, why don't you call Tyler Perry and put you in the movie? <laughs> First of all, I don't got that nigga number. Right, right, right. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. He knows who I am, but, but uncle or aunt, you know. But people think if you just call up these celebrities yeah, and say, right. man, put me to work. But, all right, let's go back a little further. Okay. So you born in Chicago. Southside. Right. Um, do you still rep, do you rep Chicago? I rep Chicago, but I'm really a Bay Area comedian. Right, right. That's you know, so right. I re, Chicago is my city. I'm a Bear right. fan. I'm a Bulls fan. Okay. You know, Chicago is my city. Right. But when I started comedy, sure. well, well, when, when I started getting notoriety, sure. and Chicago was really like, who is this fool? Mm -hmm. We don't know him. When you and go I, back to Chicago. Yeah, when right. I would go back or, or just, right. you know, when I hit Comic View, right. you know, just Chicago comics were like, who is this? He uh, right. he went he ain't come through with us. Right, right, right. You know, and so I had to really like I had a chip on my shoulder when I would go to Chicago. Really? Because I, I had to go in there and let them know, one, you wanna claim me. Right, right. I'm I one of the that. dudes you wanna claim. You heard that? You know. You wanna claim them. Mm -hmm. You 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 right. know, and no disrespect, but you, right. you wanna and, and there's some great comics right, sure. come out of the Chicago incubator. And so uh, you know, I just remember those times very vividly where they, they was like you know, like this dude ain't one of us, and then that slowly changed. You know, it, 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 I think it's because you didn't come up in comedy in Chicago. Indeed, you were born, and then you moved on, blah blah well, blah. Well, my emphasis of my career was in Chicago. So, you know, when when I wanted to be a comedian, I was in Chicago. My formative oh. years. So, oh, really, I don't leave Chicago till I'm a junior in high school. So, I was already yeah. like showing signs of comedy. Right. You know, and then we move. We move. From Chicago to Monroe, Louisiana, right, Louisiana right. and and then I start to you right. Know, and then really, Bay is where you really Bay is where you started really getting right. into the you know but, but, I was in the Navy. I got right. a lot of life between right. then. Right, and right. You know what sure, I mean? Sure, so, yeah. sure, sure. But um, I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, but because there's there's some there's some bangers out of Chicago. I yeah. mean, Chicago represented some bangers. Um, and like you said, you might want to claim me, man, from what right. from what you've done. But yeah, I, I've been working with you for a long time. I've seen you around, but um, I didn't know like there's a couple of things, man, like. You went to the Navy, yeah. uh, uh, like right out of high school, was it kind of thing like that? Uh, I went. I was. In, I did college a year and a half, and then went to the Navy. Uh, I had a baby on the way, and I wanted to take care of my baby. Right. And I, I, I knew I didn't want my mom taking care of me and mine. Okay. And so I went and joined the Navy to take care of my daughter, who's now thirty-two. Oh wow. Okay. And uh, and and that was that was my decision at that point. And the Navy took me to New Orleans, then to the Bay Area. Okay. Okay. So. I really was getting my legs strong in New Orleans. Okay. You know, uh, that's when I saw all of y'all come through. Now, we, I don't meet you to the Bay Area, but like Cheryl Underwood okay. and all mm -hmm. them comics, mm -hmm. Hope Flood, they would come through. Uh, I don't know if you remember a dude named Wayne Robinson from in the, in the Bay, mm -hmm. in, no, in New Orleans. No, no, no. Wayne was our OG. Oh, was he? Okay. He was our OG, and okay. he showed us kind of the game in New Orleans. Uh, who else was there? Um, Dr. Ken Jun. I mean, yeah, yeah. Dr. Dr. Ken, Ken Jung was That's in medical school. Right, right, from, right. From the hangover. Right, the little the Asian dude jumped out naked, with nuts and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. It's yeah. in your mind. You can't, yeah. you can't get it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, speaking of the Navy, my daughter was in the, uh, in the Navy, and she told me a lot of, a lot of, and this is now, a couple years ago, a lot of racism. Did you, did you, did you run into that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's racism Navy? everywhere. I'm an old black man. It's racism everywhere. You know, right, I mean, right, right. like, you, you, it, there's always racism to deal with in any profession, even in our profession. You know, <laughs> you know, in, yeah, the, yeah. in the comedy world, you know, the comedy clubs are very segregated. Right, you like right. it's clubs you won't book because you're not a mainstream act. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I've had I've had like bookers, like national bookers, like man, I should bring you to Columbus. Right. And I'm like, how come? Why wouldn't you? Right, right. You know, I mean, I, I can sell tickets. They right. like me here, but you know, we just don't know. You know, with black acts, we don't know what what what, what it's gonna be. But what I don't like about about how some of the comedy clubs do, if you're a black act, you gotta sell out all the shows. Yes. If you're a white act, you don't have to sell out all the shows. If they bring a unit, you better sell out every show. It's like the pressure's different in a white. Now, in their defense, uh, they don't work for as much money. Okay. On, but, on, the, okay. on the low end. Okay, okay, I'll take that. But some comics that aren't the, the, uh, sell out all the tickets, I bet you they'll come out for a little bit, little bit less money. 
True. You know what I'm saying? Because we want to work. Comics want to work. Do you know how many cities that people want to see me and they be begging me, like, why don't you come to RJ? Why don't you come to... Right. Well, talk, call your comedy club. You know, they think yeah. I, don't, I won't sell no tickets. So, right. you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I sell one-offs really well. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If I do a, a theater or if like I do sometimes a... Sometimes a weekend, right. you know, five, six shows mm -hmm. spread you out too right. much. Sure. Certain sure. cities. You know, like like my, one of my big cities is Baltimore. I, I right. kill in Baltimore, well, yeah, right. you know. Yeah, but I can't, I can't catch a cold in D.C. They yeah, won't, I can't get nobody problem. to bring me to D.C. You know, unless I'm playing, you sure. know, Constitution Hall. Right, right, you right. Know, with, with somebody, right. With, with right, somebody right, being. Right, right, right. So, I, yeah. I, feel, I feel you on that. All right, so you're getting the comedy in, you know, you know you're getting into, uh, you, have, you have a kid. Um, at the time, you're in the, in, in the Navy, mm -hmm. and you're in San Francisco. So, mm -hmm. not San Francisco, but the Bay Area. Bay, the, well, New Orleans, then the Bay Area. Right, right. Yeah. Now, and around that time, because the Bay, what year was that? Like mid 90s? The Bay Area, I'm in the Bay Area 94 to 98. Right, I mean, right. Yeah. So you were around the um, Bay Area Comedy Competition? Absolutely. Did you, did you ever get into that? Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, didn't, I won in 2002. Oh, wow. Okay. Damn. And so, but I don't, I, I was in it before that. Like, I remember my first time in a com comedy competition in the Bay Area, which for y'all that don't know, mm -hmm. it was the premier competition. It was, if you was a black comedian, you had to perform in this competition. Right. And I remember being in the room, Cheryl Underwood, oh, Arnaz yeah. J. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, you might have been in that room. Oh, I mean, it was so many heavy hitters, and I'm mm -hmm. sitting back there. I'm a Rudy Poop. I'm right. sitting back there going, I, sh I should leave. Right. You know, and uh, James Hanna was incredible that yeah. year. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rest in peace. Yeah. Who, who's gone now. Mike Epps mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did not win this competition. Chris Tucker was in it, didn't win. You know, um, uh, I think Jamie Foxx won one year, didn't he? Jamie, Jamie Foxx won, won, or maybe DL Kenneth, lost no. to a guy named uh, Lester Be Berry. Lester Berry won, mm -hmm. and um, uh, my Mark man, Curry. Mark, Mark Curry didn't win. He didn't win. He didn't. He didn't win mm -hmm. yet. Mark Curry didn't. Y'all gotta check that out. We gotta check that out. We gotta yeah. Google that. We yeah, Google yeah. that. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got call, call right. my man and ask. Well, him. you know, you know who used to, who used to manage a lot of those comics. What was the guy's name? Um, uh, uh, God I know. I know. Sorry. His birthday is coming up too. Really? He's, he's my guy. We talking. Um, God Shame on you. God dang it. We're we, we going to pass. Yeah. Once I get the name, yeah. we're going to cut right into it. Tony Sparks. No, Spires. Tony Spires. Yeah. You know what? My man Tony Spires, you know, he was the one who produced that. Yeah, right yeah, there, man. Right? Tony Spires, great guy. And he had a lot of acts that did it. I'm going to tell you how I messed up. Well, I ain't going to say I messed up. But okay. My, my mouth was something else back in the day. You think it's mad I'm, now? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah. Was like, <laughs> we were in the room. It was like 30. It's two-day competition. The first two days had about 31 comics a, yeah. a night. So 60-some comics are going in to win this Bay Area comic, um, black comedy competition because, like he said, it was one of the biggest competitions yeah. you know, for a black comic to be yeah. discovered. Chris Tucker was actually discovered there by um, my, my man uh, Bob Sumner and you know, blah, blah, blah. The rest is history. All right. right. Put him on Def Jam and so forth. Well, a lot of comics that were managed by Tony Spires would move on in the competition. Let's just say that's he, the that's the lore, right? And he well, lower my ass. That's why they moved. He moved on. But I, <laughs> okay, he managed them, and they moved to another level, and he's the one or something like that. And so the year I was there, man, <laughs> you said it. I feel that there's 30 comics in this room. We all sitting around because we had to pick pick our names out of a hat. Numbers. Yeah. And Tony Spires, and he gave us the rules and everything. And I said, this is right in front of everybody. I said, Tony, before this competition starts, before we go out here. Is there any way I can sign with you, man? I need to win this motherfucker. <laughs> and everybody's like, what did he just say? Wow. And, like, oh. and I killed on, I went up first, unfortunately, I got number one. I killed, and they only picked four comics. And after the show was over, two of the judges came to me and said, you were number five. Wow. Nigga, number five is number 31. So <laughs> right, like, oh, yeah, easy. I ain't easy. moving on, brother. 66. But I was like, damn, <laughs> I wonder could I have been number four if my mouth would have been quiet. <laughs> I mean, you I know. know. <laughs> I know, but I mean, that was like, cool. speak, speaking of that, that, that whole conversation about Tony picking people, mm -hmm. so it's, it's 2000. I had swore off competitions. I felt like it was bad for art, right. for the art of comedy. I said, I'm not ever doing another competition because I had been in Bay Area like three times. Sure. Never made it past, the, never made it to the semifinals. And I get a call, a friend of mine is like, yo, Tony wants you to get in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh-oh, -uh, Tony, Tony, Tony wants to manage me. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, so you're thinking the same thing? Yeah, I love so Tony I, was definitely, I was definitely on that. And he called me a couple of days later. We talked on the phone at length, maybe a couple hours. And he was like, I was like, well, at the end of the conversation, he's like, so Tony, what? You want to manage me? Mm -hmm. He said, Roddy, I know people think that once I manage right. them, but it's not like that. He said, first of all, where you're going, I can't take you. Oh wow. He wow. said he said I can get you all the black stuff in the world but you're going to need some mainstream help and I can't give that to you. And so he was really transparent. I didn't win 2001, but I won in 2002, but I met Cedric 
the entertainer, his role manager Rome. that Eric year. Rome? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, it, uh, um, God damn, I'm old. Okay. Uh, uh, his name is uh, KB <laughs> Kelvin Bland. Oh, okay, back in. So it, it was. So I, I meet Kelvin Bland. We we developed a relationship. He said, "Man, I'm gonna hook you up with Said." The Kings was over. Right. Said was about to do Bud Light tour. Mm. And so I get a call a couple of weeks later, and he was like, "Yo, can you go out on this weekend?" So we played Detroit and Indianapolis uh, the first weekend, and uh, it was unreal, man. And I was I was going home, and I got my little two way out. The, not the big sky pager, right, 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 right. the little cheap two way. Okay, and I was okay. like, "Yo, the man, one appreciate way. the gig." Right, right, the right, one way, right, right, right. I appreciate the gig. And hit me back, Mark. Mark. Uh, Mark. Uh, Mark was actually managed by Tony. Uh, Curry, Mark. not Mark Curry. Mark, um, light skinned tall basketball player. Uh, Mark Jackson? No, nigga. No, oh, the nigga. Oh, the, it's in your mind. I gotta know. <laughs> Mark Jackson, a basketball player. Okay, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm trying anyway, to help you. I'm trying to help anyway, you out. Mark, Mark couldn't make. Mark couldn't make it to the uh, to tall, the tall light skinned Mark. That's right. Yeah, Mark couldn't make it to the gig, and uh, and asked me did I want to come that next weekend. I, I and the next weekend ended up being the rest of the summer. Wow. And so when I came back. That 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 following year to the competition, right. my confidence was through the roof, and nice. I played the Fox Theater, the you know uh, all you know the, right. the, the theater at the uh, Madison Square mm-hmm. Garden. We played all those big places with Sid through the summer, and I I was just ready to, ready. I think we're on the same page. We may not be on this, but we let me ask you: mm-hmm. Do you feel I damn sure do um, that sometimes you're too funny, and some people don't want to bring you on the road with them? Well, like Seth was beautiful because Seth, right. Seth don't care. I, right. he, he would look at Seth as one of the kings of comedy. Right. But other comedians on tour. The that's that's part of it, though. Like you know, like I tell people, opening for anybody is a is a job that shouldn't be long. You shouldn't like to be honest. My opinion, the Plastic Cup Boys should have been left, Kevin, mm-hmm. or he should have let them go because I think it retards your growth on some level. Like get comfortable. Like, I mean, and you make. I mean, Kevin is paid, pays great money. I mean, it would be hard for any of us to leave that situation. But if you want to be you, you cannot stay under nobody. Right. I just saw. I was. I was at a club in, in L.A. and uh, Naeem pulled up in his convertible Bentley. Ooh, it's hard to leave that, brother. <laughs> it's dude, what, what, why would you ever leave it? While I Ubered it up there. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, but no, I understand. And it's funny you say that. I'm that kind of guy. I would leave a situation that I feel like, I, you know, even though I'm making good money, mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I need to grow. Yeah. Some people, I get it. I mean, why, you know, Plastic Cup Boys, I, I like them all. They, they, they're cool as hell, but could they go further without him? Maybe they know, you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, right. Maybe they maybe not. Maybe they say, you know what? This is, man, we staying here right now. In this I'm going to ride know? this cow to stop I, moving. I can't be mad at him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you I know. mean, and I, and I I was in a situation like that. I mean, I work with Monique. Monique, right. Monique made a way for me to make lots of money. Right. I make great money with Monique, and I, I show her love to this day. But we got to points where where I felt like my growth needed me to be on my own. Oh, right, sure. And, and she, she gave me the tutelage to even be on my own, like, my first five thousand dollar gig was because of Monique. Sure. So she called me for a gig, and I was like, "She, she the first comedian to put me on the phone with a promoter." Oh wow! Huh? She yeah. was like, "Yo, Rod, we gonna work, you know, NJ Pack, New Jersey." Uh, and I'm like, "Well, how much I get?" She was like, "I don't know. You gotta talk to the promoter." I'm like, "Well, Mo, I ain't never talked to no promoter." She was like, "Fool, just call him." I'm like, "Well, well how much did I ask?" Fine, right, sure. She was like, "Tell me on five grand." But I ain't know that. I ain't know he got paid five five grand to tell jokes. Right. He just asked for it. So I get on the phone with the promoter. He's slick. I, I, hey, young man. Uh, Monique uh-huh. says she wants you on the show. Uh, you think? Uh, uh, what, 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 what we talking about? I said, you know, give me. Let me get five grand. He said five grand. Oh hell no! You got me mixed up, homeboy. Matter of fact, I can get somebody right here to do it for five hundred. I said, all right. We'll call Mo. He said, I call her right now. He clicks over. Call Monique. Hey, sugar. Uh, yeah, Monique, I got your boy on the phone. He, he said he want a uh, five grand. Um, I told him I can get somebody here for five hundred. She said, "Well, no, you can't, sugar, because can't nobody else work with me." Oh, there you go. That's the sister got your back. Can't nobody else work with me. But Monique, hold on now, Monique. Now they don't hold you gonna on. mess over this? You gonna mess this deal up on five grand? Yes. She said, "No, sugar. You, you gonna mess, mess this deal, deal up on five grand?" Wow. That's why people can't. They don't even come to me when they got bad stuff to say about her. Cause they, you can't, you know, she she's so fair, and, and 
to this day, I work with that promoter. You know, from time to time, he called sure. me. You know, he get any had of money, the money be right. Right, right, and, right. You know, from that moment. Well, I forgot the manager for Steve Harvey. He had made big something. Uh, I uh, can't think. Remember big, mm -hmm, big mm -hmm. something. One time they were doing a rap. He had a, a rap of his TV show. Steve Harvey had the one. Um, big time. Yeah. No, 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 not big. Not the show Big Time. When okay. he was being the boys, maybe. I don't remember. One oh, of the shows oh, wow. Like that. Way back yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe the first year of the one he was a teacher in. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't remember all the shows. Steve Harvey show. The Steve Harvey show. Okay. And um, his manager, we were doing an after party. He said, yo, man, you, you should work some comedy club in like South Carolina or something. I said, man, I can't never get in there. He said, I'll call. He said, man, I'll call. He said, what, what you want? And I, you know, for the weekend, $1,500 was good for me. You know, at right, the time. Right. I was like, shit, give me $1,500. He said, $1,500? I'm gonna give you five thousand dollars. I feel like saying, nigga, I ain't working that many shows. <laughs> you I got all thirty month, shows. Nigga. Yeah, I'm gonna be all month long shit. Come on now, I'm gonna work the weekend. You live in South Carolina. And he said, he said, no. And the next day he called me. He said, you're going to South Carolina. It's five thousand dollars. I was like, what? Yeah. I only made fifteen hundred dollars before. Five thousand dollars. And you know, so sometimes I'm that's one of the milestones. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you know, this, to Steve and his crew, that, that, that's like that's little. But to us, it's, it's major, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And speaking of which, because I got the same love for Monique. I, I know you might have talked about it. I haven't seen you. So how do you ride with her decision? I know it's her decision with the Netflix situation. How do you ride with it? Would you, I don't say would you have done it, because you're not, you know, you're a different situation. Do you think it worked out for her in the long run at the end? Or you think she I think it know? worked out for people that look like her, you know? Okay. I think it worked, I like, like if you see now, and, and to be honest, in my opinion, I think Netflix still haven't done right by black comedians. Okay. Like Netflix only services the top 5% of comedy, or 2%, mm. right? So you look, the Kevin Hart's of the world, Dave Chappelle's of the world, that's, that's a real win. small group mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. Like, how many black comics, urban comics, not just black, urban comics are on Netflix with Netflix original specials? Ooh. Mm -hmm. You're right. So more don't have no Netflix original specials. Eddie Griffin doesn't. Eddie Griffin don't. I mean, we talking about great comics. Mm -hmm. You know, we we establish what's cool in America. Curry, yeah, yeah. And we don't about. get no, you know, this platform. Like even now, to have black faces, they have they have. And no offense to our African brothers and sisters, but even with movies, right? Mm -hmm. They they play an African face, and you click on it, you be like, oh, it goes some black, and it's black. Right. But it ain't American. American black. It ain't urban. It ain't those buzzwords that stand for you and I. So uh, do, was she right? Would I have done it the same way? Maybe not. Right. You know, because I got miles of feet. Right. You know, and not to say she don't. Sure, no, no, but, no, no. But, you know, like she already, I told Mo, I told Mo this. I said, I'm trying to get blackballed. Oh, shit. Like, you got to think. <laughs> blackball is a luxury. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, you, know, you got to be owned to get blackballed. Right, right, sure. sure. You I, know, I, get, so, I, get you, right, I get what you're saying. You know, so... So you got essentially what happened to Monique is she got blackballed in the in the white world. Right. She she can still go make money. And black right, right, sure. You know, her social media is growing and all that stuff. I begged Mo to get on social media back when we was doing the Monique show. Right. And she's in that space now. So she's building that audience. Good. And so uh is you know is she wrong for 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 what she said? I think I think she was absolutely right. And would I have done it the same way? I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, because I wanted to see her win, and I, I mean, you know, I mean, right then and there. But I, you know, now I'm playing Monday, 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 Monday morning quarterback. Yeah, Monday morning quarterback. Um, you know, I wish she, if she would have done the special. She was in. She, she, she was it, on. She was on the on the on the on the route right, to go right, superstar. Right. right. I, 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 of course. Yeah. I think if 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 she would have done the special, and even to me, now it's me. I'm not in her space, so don't even remember. Like apologize to Oprah in a joking manner, you know, a joke. My mama about to kick me out the house, out the family, because she knows she loves Oprah. Whatever she could have said, right. Lee Daniels. People would have wanted to see the special to watch her. Oh, that's, you know, she apologized on the special. Right. We want to watch. So the numbers would have got up more because you know, them folks look at algorithm, 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 algorithms. You You're know, real close. Like, You're right, real close. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both get old. Um, um, they look at numbers, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, All day, every yeah. day. But you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I would have loved to see her get the higher numbers that she wanted and the views and so forth. But and as then long got as you're alive, money. you got a chance. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, as long as you're alive. Mo's a bad dude. Mess. Mess that dude. Bad female. She's yeah. bad in it. You know what I'm saying? I came up with her. I see her doing her way, and she's going to do it. And you got to give her credit and, and, and respect for it. She's, she's staying in that socket. Yeah. But we want to see her shine so much bigger 
You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people are pulling so, for so her. So the question you got to ask us as comedians, mm-hmm. do it matter if you're not in the white world? Does it matter? No, right, Black right, people make you famous. Right. White people make you rich. Right, right. So do, do you want that mainstream success? I mean, I, I look at myself, my career, the only thing I could have done different is serenade the mainstream right. more. But I don't like the people, even in, in the black community, who dog her out at times. You know, you know what I'm saying? Say, ah, she should have. Black you know, people come yeah. and go though. Well, right, but but that's her base though. You know what I'm saying? So I wish she that never wasn't. lost her base. Okay, if you, okay. I mean, uh, not the whole of black people. Right. Black females. Sure. She never lost them. She never lost them. No, you're sure, but she well, she still got it. She, I'm a huge fan of it. Our, you know, I, I still got love for. Her. Yeah. All right, you have made. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at a list of some of the movies you made. I'm like, what is this boy onto? I was, I was I mean, in Pierre's films. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you done mine. You know, Once Upon a Time in Detroit. Johnson uh, family. Joe Blunt wrote, produced, and directed that. Shout out to my boy from uh, yeah. Detroit. Yeah. Very funny comedian. Johnson Family Vacation, The Last Laugh, uh, Chicago Polanski Jones, Medea's yeah. Big. Uh, big happy, happy, happy family, family. Yeah. the drone that say the drone that saved Christmas. That's 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 current. That that hasn't come out yet. Nigga, is there something that you won't do? Well, God damn. I, this <laughs> my first. That's the first movie where I'm number one on the call sheet. Oh, oh so this is your movie. All yeah, right, that's my movie. So we make, make it, it, we make sure we watch and, the drone and, and that saved the, Christmas. The, the first installment of that movie, uh, Jackie Long played the main character, and that movie was on Netflix. And oh, so, oh, 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 there's, oh, oh, there's a, there's, this, it's like, it's the kind of a, a lot of stuff. Secret. Yeah, it's, it was a drone, it was another drone, da da da, uh, movie or something. Okay, like okay, yeah. okay. Well, or, or they, these guys are about technology, so they always have technology based. So it wasn't a drone; mm. it was something else to save Christmas. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. It was okay. the app that saved Christmas. That's what it was. was the app, okay, okay. But well, damn, brother, and this is a small portion of the movie you do. I see why you do all these movies because you got six kids. Damn. Six kids. Brother, you ever go to uh, bed and go to sleep? So you know, just go fall asleep. <laughs> you, you, like, you don't like sleep at first? Hey, people ask me all the time, y'all going to have any more? I said, if she keep laying there. ooh we <laughs> No, nah, we, we done, though. No, we done. Yeah, at, at, at our age, I think it's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, my sperm don't even come out no more. Just mother, it don't door, shoot out for sure. Like, fuck, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm going back. I'm going back in the balls, man. Yeah. I'm going back my in the shit, balls? My, yeah, yeah. My shit, my shit going backwards and shit. <laughs> wow, wow. But yeah, yeah, so you have, you have six kids. That's, that's, that's amazing. Five girls. Five, ooh, yeah, yeah. Five girls. D- d- does it make your act different with having all girls? Do you, like, shun away from saying something, just, you know? Like, only one joke. Really? I had one joke where I, I alluded to my girls being hoes. Okay. And I played it in the car, and it was all, it was like three of them in the car, the older one. Mm-hmm. And it was like, they didn't say they didn't like it, right, but, but it was can. obviously they didn't, and I took it out. Right. Now, that is about them, but I mean, this period about women sometimes. You're like, men, like, man, women, y'all ain't shit. Y'all do this. Blah, blah, blah. Do you have any material like that? He's like, well, I don't I say it. nothing that I'm not willing to stand up, stand by. You know, so, I mean, if, if you don't like it, you just don't like it. My, if you're my daughter or my ki- my wife, you know, you just got to deal with it because, you know, this is how we eat. No, 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 no. That, that, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, I remember when you caught your stroke. I think you were in Denver at the time. Catch it. Well, how do you, how, how do you get it? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, shit. What do people get there? What do you, your I mean, stroke, what do you, how do you get a stroke? You, you well, borrowed a stroke? I, I don't know. I don't you know. Loan a stroke? You, <laughs> stroke on loan. Someone hooked you up with a stroke? <laughs> what it you wasn't mean? a hookup. Well, I know that's hookup. right. So, <laughs> so I'm on the road, Denver, Colorado, mm-hmm. uh, playing a Denver improv. Okay. And you know, when you play the improv across the street, is that a big Walmart. Okay, right, well, I've never hotel. played that one, but okay. You never played Denver? Man, no. I mean, you should. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's all good. Yeah. It's your show. So, so, so uh, I met Denver. Uh-huh. It, it's, mm-hmm. um, I talked to Joey Wells on the phone. He's telling us about a friend of ours, Mickey. Mm-hmm. Mickey had just had a stroke. And as he was telling me wow. her story, it was like, I was just feeling like, yo, I feel like that right now. Like how he was saying she, her symptoms were. And I was which like, were? Oh, which were uh, arm weakness, speech slurring. Uh, you know, there, there's uh, uh, the uh, American Heart American Stroke Association has a um, what? <laughs> My, Tammy, arm hurting. She slur every time she talks. I mean, she, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, <laughs> damn. Lay down, girl. Why don't you go ahead and lay down? Is it carpal oh, tunnel? Okay, yeah, what about your whole different. arm? That's what about different. your arm? That's all the way to your shoulder? <laughs> She, all the way to the show. I can't hear what she's saying right now. She's slurring. You can't yeah, hear her. Right, right, right. What well, she's So American Heart American Stroke, they have acronyms: uh, speech slurring, arm weakness, and, and, and then you know the, you see those things, and you should go have it checked. Uh, so I, I talked to uh, Hank Denson, my buddy Hank, 
who's who's almost a doctor in my world, you okay. know. And so Hank said, right, you get your blood pressure checked. So I, I go across the street, you know, with the little hotel shuttle. Mm-hmm. I go into Walmart, check my pressure in a Walmart glove, you know, that little sleeve, right? Sure. My blood pressure is 221 over 140. What that mean? She said, damn. Okay, <laughs> oh, okay, I don't know what that means. That's bad. That's super bad. Like, wow. you know, you, you're supposed to live at like 120 over 80. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 221 over 140. It's, it's astronomical. Right. So then I got to make a decision. If I go to the emergency room right then, I probably don't have a stroke. But I um, I didn't. I chose to do my shows. You wow. Know, I felt right. like I needed that money. Right, sure. I need. I, I went and did the shows. and uh, How did you feel on the show when you were performing? Did you feel any kind of way? Uh, my brother was featured for me. He said I looked a little slow. I didn't look myself. Okay. But I got through the sets. Like, I still got the sets on my phone that I recorded that night. And I sound fine to me. And um, But you... you I, I did the two shows. I really wasn't myself in terms of I was more stationary. I was like leaning on the wall, you know, and. Uh, and you knew this, you felt a certain way up there to do that, or you just didn't I, know you I were said, doing it? I said, I didn't realize I was doing wow. it. Wow. So I said to myself before I went to the shows, if I'm going to die, I want to die on stage. Wow. Because I wanted to fuck up somebody's shows forever. <laughs> wow. Memories of comedy and shit, yeah. Yeah, well, if you ever. Was, say, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw Roddy Berry die, all right. You know, I was like, that'd be a hot show. But anyway. So uh, I, I, did, I did the show tonight, went to the emergency room at the VA. I'm a vet. And um, I walked in, and I didn't walk out for like 50 days. You don't remember anything like that? You, no, or no, you, no. I oh, remember, oh, I remember oh, vividly. Okay. I mean, I, I was in ICU for eight days. Um, they, they got my heart. Because if, if, if your blood pressure is you're stroking, right. you're probably in uh, the realm of having a heart attack, too. So I they, felt they like stayed, that when I was stroking. <laughs> <laughs> he be stroking. Okay, but well, go ahead. I'm Somebody, comics are the worst. So co- are. I had comics hit me in the hospital talking about, uh, <laughs> I heard you got a movie. Man, You how you get a movie? I'm like, movie? Yeah, you're doing the Clarence Carter story. Oh, I wow, you be stroking. Be stroking. <laughs> comics so, are. So, uh, but yeah, so I, I, went, I went through all that, man. Uh, once you come out of ICU, I went to rehab, and I did speech therapy, wow. occupational therapy, and uh, physical therapy where I learned how to walk again every day for the next like 50 days so I walked out the hospital. How did your family, your family came to visit you, of course, they, that's how that yeah, works? Yeah, friends and family came out. I really didn't know, want nobody to see me. My wife and I made a decision for me not to come home and to stay in Denver because the rehab facility at the VA in Denver was the best in the VA system at that time. And so the, the real thing that really gave me uh, the, uh, my ignorance helped me. Because I, I had shows, but I was trying to make shows. Right, sure. Yeah, I was yeah, in the road dog. You're a dog. Y'all yeah, need to get me riding. out of here in two right, weeks. Right, right, right. You know, and, and they was like, uh, nigga, you can't walk. And so uh, I went went through that that part, and and uh, I walked out of there, like I say, almost 50 days later. Did you, I don't know if the right word, but did you learn anything about yourself? Absolutely. Did you, like, Absolutely. what is it that you, like, you know, the endurance, or did you, like, take, take you know, not take for granted to walk and yes. drink, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you definitely walk away with a, a overall sense of respect in life. Mm. You know, like, you know, because it's easy to take things for granted. Sure. Like, like you asked me earlier, like, you know, about the career. Do you feel like you, you got where you want to be? You, you have to be find a way to be thankful every day for for whatever. Small things, yeah, right. For every single thing, I mean. And so that's the stuff that I did. I really, you know, pared it down. You know, I was a guy that, that 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 couldn't take a single step. Wow. And so, forget being a stand-up comedian. You know, I didn't know if I would ever be on stage again. I didn't know if I would be able to stand again. I didn't. You know, so uh, as 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 I I broke my life down to the the lowest common denominator. If you could take a s- single step, you can get anywhere. Right. And and that's that was my walk away. You, you know what I was a little envious of? You got the, you got your flowers without having to die. Facts. Because let me tell you, I saw so much outpouring of love for you, and I was like, this nigga ain't even dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were giving you all kind of love. And I was like, that is the greatest thing to know. People, I got to go you. to my own funeral. Yeah, and people I got were, to go to my own funeral, and they was, you know, and they, was, you know, I had friends calling me, oh, we're gonna do a benefit. I was like, no, don't do a benefit because right. that's for a dead guy. Mm-hmm. Don't benefit me. I'm gonna be all right. I'll be back. You know, right, and, right. Uh, who who so, all hit you up? I mean, I mean, I saw everybody. anybody anybody hit you up? Did you surprised? It's like, whoa, what yes. the? Um, Cause everybody was hitting you up. I mean, really, your shit was flooded. I was like, man, you Carmichael. know, Carmichael. 
Gerard Carmichael? Gerard Carmichael That's sent us a big bouquet of flowers to my home. And no. I don't know Gerard Carmichael. From the drop rap, from the drop you know, I don't know. And and I was just, I was floored by that because I think the guy is hilarious. I think mm -hmm. he's funny, mm -hmm. but I don't know him. Sure. And he, he sought out my address or whatever. And my wife, even, we talked about it like a couple of nights ago that, that she got calls from people like, how you get my number? Wow. You know, yeah, sure. Uh, of course, sure. you know, said called me. Uh, you know, my guys Mo called me. Get the hell out of that boy. You know, I, you know, I got, I got, you know, my my folks hit me up. Mm -hmm. And um, Kevin Hart, who who's always been a good friend of mine. Sure, sure. You know, he hit me up with with the, with some money. You know, he was like, "Yo, Rod, don't worry about your family. We got them." You know, and he sent me like two stack, twenty twenty grand. You Damn. Know, he sent me like twenty grand. Well, he should because he stole your friends now. You know, you used yeah. to hang with them. Kevin Hart stole my friends. Right, so. All so, of them. Uh, well, at least two. Two of my, my, my best friends. So, Harry Ratchford. Right. That, you know, he and I were in the Navy together. Oh. And okay. uh, he was my roommate when I was in the Navy. Both of y'all were seamen. That is a fact. <laughs> we were Got actually it. a comedy team. Uh, really? Nuts and nuts? <laughs> no, Ratchet Rod. <laughs> Ratchet Rod. Ratchet Rod. <laughs> Ratchet Rod Comedy Explosion. We was uh, Nut, nutty buddies. The nutty <laughs> buddies. buddies. The semen. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, go ahead. Hey, you, you I, 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 it's my show. I got no one more. One yeah, more. Go, I know you got another. I know you got another. No, these but, uh, nuts. <laughs> give it up for these no, nuts. <laughs> no, coming ahead. to the stage. Yeah, right, Show's love for the nuttiest right. brothers. That right, come. right. But go um, ahead. Harry Raffer. So Her Harry and I uh, were friends. Like Harry meets Kevin through me. Really? Because me and Kevin would play John Madden football all the time. Right, right. That's why I would go to Kevin House and Harry would roll with me and. You know, we all became friends, and their their they, both of their first wives really solidified their relationship. Mm, you know, because okay. they would do a couple of stuff. And my wife was just never a you know a, a big group. She wasn't right. you know that she type a southern of girl. She was southern. Yeah. Yeah. She's a southern yeah, girl. Yeah. And, you know, she was just you know she could get take it or leave it. She, right. Right. She wasn't trying to be famous. Right. At all. Sure. And no disrespect to either one of those. They are my friends. So. Right. But but you know it was it was just a different time and. The fact that they they all grew closer as couples, right? You know, which ultimately, you know, you know, they both, you know, have turns into a lot of things, business and everything yeah, happens. Business, yeah. all that. They, they both got two different wives now too. <laughs> oh wow! Oh okay. Oh, oh, oh from the beginning. Okay, I yeah, see what you're saying. From, all right, all right, there, yeah. all right. Oh wow! Well, who else? Yeah, other so, person? And Joy Wells. And I'm gonna say Joey. I'm about yeah, to say Joey. Joey Wells. Yeah. Joey Wells. So, so he stole some good people from you. He stole some good good. Kevin, I, you know, you a I thief, told Kevin all his all his original friends. Oh, you're as good as my friend. Oh, 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 before, before you. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, okay. but, uh, I mean, and no, but, but it, that's just a joke, man. No, no, no. spent a lot of holidays. And, and, and for the record, Kevin owes me $100,000. Okay, for the record. Well, let's put up the camera right there, brother. Yeah. Kevin, I want my money. And he act like he don't remember. But one Thanksgiving, we was bowling. Okay, I think I remember that. Kevin was talking shit. Right. He's like, what, Rod? I said, $100,000, I'll beat you right here. I throw a strike. You ain't going to throw it. Bet. I threw the strike. I'm still waiting on my money. So, so he owe, he owed me eighty. Woo! What size shoe you wear? Eleven. That should be in his ass. <laughs> Kevin, you get eleven. No, but no, no but that's no, all good. Yeah, 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 of course. The guy is super generous, oh. man. And if, if nothing more than than help my boys, you know, live a great life. Right. You sure, know, sure, man, sure, love, sure, man, sure. I I love what Kevin does for his friends. You know, gives gets all that. But no, that was a beautiful thing, man. When I saw when I finally had uh, a stroke and. You know, everybody was just, just came to your aid, and I was like, you know, that that's beautiful to see the love, man, before you get out of here, man. You ain't got no bunch of them, though. Uh, your ass got, like, I might have one more, you, maybe. Because then you got COVID. I got COVID. Then right, they right. came out again right, for me, right, they, right, prayer right. warriors. Right, right. The numbers went down a little bit, though. You know, yeah, we lost, know, we lost we lost a couple of them. All right, we gave, we gave you everything for the stroke. Now, next thing. You, yeah, if yeah. I get anything else, it's a bad day. Uh, uh, elbow injury. I might not tell nobody. I, I know that's right. <laughs> I might just die. Damn. But that's that's cool. Okay, so um, I didn't realize you did you do writing too. Now like you don't just produce. You wrote like like you did something for uh, I think it was Kim Whitley. Remember her show Old Drama? Uh, that was that was my yep. well me and Joey. Uh -huh. So I I didn't have no car. I had a car that got repoed. Okay, I had another car the that struggle got, is real got booted. You know, in L.A. you parked wrong, you got the car got booted. I never got it out. And Joey became my ride everywhere. Wow. So so me and Joey became super cool with Kim. And so we start writing her monologues on old drama. No budget, you know, none of that stuff, right? And we just did it for the experience. And and Kim, you know, looked out for us. And we, we ultimately, me, Joey, and Rod, man, mm -hmm. we oh, ultimately Rod, man, got like, like 100 and 120 bucks an episode or something. Right, right, you know, they, wow. They end up giving us. But how about this for a relationship? 
So the executive producer of Kim Whitley's show is also Marilyn Gill, the executive producer of the Monique show. I know. So when my name go across their desk, it's a no-brainer because they I got the relationship from Kim Whitley back in the day. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now, now you know, I guess all the little things you do, we can call it our babies. You're a writer, director, producer, comedian. Is there anyone that you lean towards most? You say, this is my baby right here. I'm a stand-up. You, at the end of I'm the a day, stand-up. Right. I'm a stand-up. Everything else is, you know, it keeps me in, in the world because I, I'm never going to get a, I haven't worked a regular job since 1998. So, so Good stuff. I'm, um, you know, that all keeps me in entertainment, right? You right. know, the overall in inter- entertainment. The only reason I'm an actor is because all the guys that was working in comedy clubs mm-hmm. were also actors. You know what okay. I mean? Like okay. when you see somebody coming home from a weekend and he was like bragging, you know, I just got back from Albuquerque. You know, I just got right. back. Those all every single one of those comedians was also actors. Mm. So that's why I started acting. You know, I didn't want to be no actor. I right, was, I right. Want, I'm, a, I'm a comedian. Well, it seems nowadays a lot of people are doing, trying to do everything. You know, these young comedians. Do you have? How do you feel with the with the vets versus the the IG comics? Do you think the IGs give the re- enough respect, or do you think the vets don't give the young kids enough respect? Well, you got to earn respect. Respect is earned either way. Okay. Whether you're old dude or young dude, the the, the first time you don't get young people is your first day as an old motherfucker. Oh, okay. You know, that's you just that's just the the, the right. nature of the beast, you know. But uh like the, the young dudes I like, I like. Okay. I like Desi Banks, mm-hmm. I like um uh Country Wayne. I've had him a couple of times. You know, I, I I like those guys. They're mm-hmm. like funny, they're funny to me. And how about this? If you keep telling jokes, you'll get good. Mm. <laughs> if you if you just and imagine imagine P like when you were two years in the game and you had a following out the door. Mm-hmm. What, what, what would that do for your confidence? Right. What would that do for your, your career? Now, the only thing, I, I wonder what's going to happen to them long, long term. Right. You know, sure. Because sure. Without, without an adequate base, you know, what are you going to do when the, when the industry really comes? Because a lot of them think they gone and they not gone. Kevin Hart is gone. You not gone. You're uh-huh. making money. You ain't gone, though. Right. If you, if you haven't done $100 million at the, bo- the box office, you ain't gone, nigga. I can still catch you. But I feel like a lot of times these young comics, you know, they do what they do. If it's goofy, if it's not. You know, some of them are good. Like you said, yeah. I have a couple of fa- friends on, on like Country Wayne and a couple, a couple other comics. But some of them just be silly and do some silly stuff. And then they do comedy clubs and they sell out. But, but their crowd likes that. They like that goofy stuff that's not even like dressing up and or just, you know, just... Do whatever they're doing on stage. Whatever it's not really is. geared like, as a stand-up. It's more like a vaudevillian show and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But if the crowd likes them and they sell out, you know what I'm saying? You know, why and, would they get better? They, How are they gonna get better if they if if, if they will continue to do that? Because they sometimes they don't want to listen to a vet. Oh, you old school. You know, you know, I get a lot of love for them, but I'm talking about, yeah. I've heard stories about other people. Yeah. Oh, nigga, them old people. But like, but those people know solid jokes. Yeah. Like you said, the longevity of it. You hot right now. What's what happen in two or three years from now when your fan base gets older? And don't go for that no more. Well, wh- why care? Well, they, because they, I, I'm they, a caring they, person. They don't care. I care. They they don't care. And and their audience, how about this? Their audience <laughs> don't give a shit either. Oh, no. They'll move on. They, they, how do you know? No, no, seen, no, no. Ain't no, none no. of them been around long enough for us to see the audience move on. I see it in rap. Are, are we, are we, but well, we're not exactly like rap either. No, we're, we're close. We're, 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 we're related. We're cousins. But right, we're, because we, we're we not entertain. Exactly rap. With some of the most rawest material, right? You know what I'm saying? It's not We're scripted not. stuff, right? Rappers write their own stuff, you know. So I, I think hopefully. it comes from a lot. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, same with comics. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> okay, you can't have 15 specials and write on your own. Get on the time. Enough of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, yeah, I mean, well, I, I tell people like this: you're gonna at some point have some help, mm-hmm. you know. And, and and how about this? Comedy is collaborative. Sometimes, I mean, you if, if you if nothing more than somebody go. Try it like this. Right. Sure. That's writing. No, no, sure, sure. That's writing. Sure, sure. You know? I, I don't I don't I don't knock people up for having writers. I really don't. At the end of the day, what you do on stage is what matters to me. Now, now what I do I do respect is people that give writers credit. Okay. The as far as I know, mm-hmm. the only comedian that has given writers credit ever is Kevin Hart. As far as I know. Hmm. Kevin Hart got written by him, Harry Rashford, Joy Wells. His stand-up? His stand-up. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. I don't know Richard Pryor, uh, Paul Mooney, 
I mean, you know, people we know to have right, rights. Right, 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 but it never and really gave me credit. I've never said, never seen it. Well, you never heard me say it because I ain't got no writers. <laughs> All the shit you see me say in the club come right out of the dome. Right. <laughs> right, so, but hey, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, whatever but you, you probably got day. four specials in you right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. You know, I easily. Do. Oh, yeah, easily. You know. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, so that is, it's all good. But look, man, um, what are we working on in the future, man? What's happening right now? What what, what we got coming out? Uh, what's, what's we saw the, the drone movie coming out. The drone that saved Christmas. Don't forget that now. Now, now we got, you know, you that's next. You forget it until they, they oh, start talking about, about it. Oh, about yeah, Okay. <laughs> no, but uh, what, what's coming out of pipe? I'm doing a special. Oh, you know, nice. I, I'm doing a special. I, I got some comedy in me that I want to be out. Okay. So, and I, I got another project I'm producing called Creative Hustle with some of my folks in Chicago. And it'll be, it'll feel like maybe Comic View. Okay. You know, we're going to put up maybe, you know, two comics per episode, uh, uh, a, a performance, and, um, and, and, and uh, sketches. Okay. And so we call it Creative Hustle. Uh, my, me and my man Jay Davis, we're producing that together. I'll be hosting that as well. So that's coming down. Probably going to shoot that in October. And I'll be shooting a special in October as well. You know. Well, now your special, what is it that you've been, what's the line inside that you want to come out? What's missing? Well, what are you talk, What are you gonna talk about? That's like well, yeah. well, I, I've lived. I lived the stroke. I lived okay. the, you know, you know, this, this life, this comedy life. But it's portions of it that I haven't, I haven't got out. And so I, I wanna, I wanna cover the stroke. I wanna cover, you know, the aftermath of it, and then how we, how we, uh, how we move on from that. Okay, okay. Well, then, well, there it is. All right, on the show, man, we do a little thing called. Okay. Where's the candle? No candle? You don't do none of that? You don't, you don't, you don't walk around with, with the candle lit already? This is some ghetto shit right here. Instead of her having the candle lit and just come around the corner with it, we're like, oh my God, she wants to stop the whole show and do this. What a bitch. <laughs> and still ain't lit. You know what I'm saying? This is all the way to the part where I cut. Back it up a little bit. Just back it up a couple steps. Just up a couple steps. We're going to act like. So, Rodney, yeah. we do a show right here. We call it. Oh, a what? What is this? Oh man, it's Rodney's birthday? Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. Since you got your, well, since you got your Diana Ross haircut, yeah. That's my favorite. See, there you go. Wow. See, have, a have a seat over. Have a seat over there. Yeah. 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 Can, can we sing the, the black version? Blow that already. Oh. You were I did. Shit. Okay, oh. what, what, it's time for you to live there. You wish for on. Someday let me be on a Pierre Panic Room show. Okay, well, your wish came true. You wasted that wish right there. <laughs> yeah, man, you're already, you're already here. But no, well, happy birthday, Rodney. Thank you know you, what I'm saying? Yes, 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 yes. 51. 51. Oh, Ooh, look at you, man. That's that, uh, that's that, what's that call that uh, red velvet kick right there, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. have to get his back to it. No, no, no. We ain't that bad. We ain't that bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they ain't that low budget. You blew it. You okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did put some COVID on it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Again, all right. Here's the thing we do. We have a wheel. We let our guests spin it. And wherever it lands, you got to do it. Like, it could be, like, if it lands on here, call back. Oh, no, hold on. What, 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 let me look at it. Let me see. Uh, call back last person. Yeah, yeah uh, a celebrity crush call. If you have a celebrity, you remember, remember you know, you like, you may have picked the, you put your cell phone up. I'll give you mine. You call them and say, hey. I got my phone. Oh, you got to say, hey, whoever it is, you have a crush on, you know, and you, you got two minutes to hear how your Mackin is. Either get, you get over to her house. My Mackin is horrible. Home. I've been married 25 years. I don't know. You're an actor. You, you, you work do, with Tyler do, Perry. Do your best. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, I forgot you work with Tyler Perry, too. Come on, I man. You, you got a little something in you. You know how to do it, brother. You know how to act. <laughs> that boy works people to death, too, though, in a good way. Hey. I've heard he, people he cry. Literally, on the he literally does everything. Well, yeah, but like, he, he records. Like, like you a hard-working guy. Right. That dude is also writing, producing, directing, and, yeah, it's crazy. But he does, like, he does, like, 13 episodes in three days. Oh, easily, easily. Woo! I did, I did an episode of Meet the Browns, but this is how fast he shoots, P. Like, I came in 9 a.m., we did a walkthrough by 10. They went to the writers, rewrote, uh, we went to lunch. We were shooting by 2.30. Wow. I was at home by 3.30. No, sir. No, sir. I don't believe you. I'm telling you. Wow. This was He's the a beast. Day. He's a beast. But but you got to be on your shit. Right, right, right. And, right, and, right. Um, and Bentley County Evans shoots like that now, too. I hear, yeah, so yeah. So when, yeah, I, I, go, when I go out yeah. to L.A. and I shoot shoot his show, yeah. you know, like my, all my scenes in the barbershop, we might shoot them back to back for like an hour, you know, and I'm in five episodes. Wow. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I talked to uh, Bentley a couple of times. And Tyler Perry, kudos to them brothers. Them brothers, you know, getting black people working, and they work a lot, so that's a good thing. All right, 
So back to this thing, you spin the wheel again. You can tell us uh, what is the your biggest lie you ever told. Any one of the stories you can repeat that you just said on here. Okay. Uh, work. <laughs> All the <them> lies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who you trade places with and why? Right. Uh, a sexual passage. Like, and that's it. How you lost your virginity? So we're gonna let you spin that wheel. Sexual passage from a book. Yeah, yeah. We got a, we got a book that has a little bit of uh, like a Zane oh, yeah. book and stuff. Oh, you gotta read it. Great. So I'm go ahead, hit that real hard. Yeah. And you just stopped it. Oh, did I stop it? What did it stop on? Real secret. A real secret you got. Something that you ain't never told nobody, man. Think about it for a second. You know, I know, I know there's real something. Real secret. There's something that when you was a boy, something you did one night at the club. Uh, you know, you and your wife been married long enough, you ain't gonna get no divorce. She ain't gonna leave. Right, 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 uh, right, right, right. Real secret. Something mm. that we ain't know. Come on. God dang it, man. You stole something before? I, I did. Yeah, uh, I did. Um, but that ain't no secret. I oh, did, why you don't told? A lot, a lot of time for that. Oh, wow. uh, uh, Something in the Navy. Ooh. <sighs> a real secret. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not a secret. It's not a secret? Uh, well, it was a secret. No. What is so it? so my, my my best friend Harry, and he was my roommate in the Navy. Uh and it is Say it. So <laughs> so he had a uh he had a a car, it was a little convertible. And um I was, uh, he let me borrow it one day and I was driving the car and I got chased by like some clan members. Mm -hmm. I got chased by some clan members and I I may or may not have wrecked it. You may or may not wreck but it. But not a full wreck, but just like a bump, a, like a slide. Cause they was chasing me and I just learned how to drive a stick. And so I slid and I, I touched the whole side of his car on another car, but it didn't. And he came out and he was like, man, that's somebody. What happened? Somebody hit my car, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's crazy." And, wow. Yeah, right. and and so I I I I kept that secret for a long time, and and I, I told him about it like recently, and he was like, "I don't give a fuck about that car," and 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 that was it. But he did remember it, and it was, and I felt better that got off my chest. All right, well, 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 what's someone? We have a quick little swag bag. So if we gave you a cake, we will give you something. You know, everything in here is black owned. Let me see, let me see what they gave me. Sure, they give you nothing that I want. <laughs> Wait a minute. I take it out. I take it out the bag. Let me see. Okay, I got a couple of things. All right, everything. Look, All the it, yeah, yeah, take it out. Look at it, man, because you know we like to highlight okay. them. These are from a black, black owned business. company. Yeah, a water company, a black owned water company. Is it Montreal or Monte yeah. Rio? Oh, really, <laughs> Monte Rio, Montreal, man, Montreal is out here. M O N T E. Montreal, Montreal. I said right, right, right. it's black, right? Right, right. Black. It's out, it's out here in Virginia. I mean, um, okay. Georgia. Okay. Eyelash. Oh, oh, yeah. Eyelash. You know, my girl I get it to my daughter. Who is that? Who is that? Uh, What's minx that? by Wet Sugar. Ooh, ooh. That sounds like an old lady I used yeah, to kick with. Really? Minx? Yeah, wet yeah, Sugar. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. A little something right there. <laughs> this box is getting me in trouble, though. This is glitter. Yeah, right. Glitter. I, I hate glitter. Oh, yeah, me too. Because it show up on your damn face three weeks later. It's okay. funny. I did a concert with my man, uh, Genuine, one time. I first did a show with him. Uh -huh. Every show I would see him after, he always had glitter on. I was like, what the hell is he? I thought he was hugging some girl with glitter. Right. I found out that nigga, he was putting glitter on him before him and shit. Mm, pony, I want your pony. Oh, bling, this bling, is bling, nice. Bling. What is from? Yeah, this is uh um. What is it? What is it? There's no name in there. Oh man, Her, that is uh celestial celestial goddess. I like. You know, I, do, I make these. Oh, do you really? I make bees. Do you? Spare time, I sure do. I like this. You like that? Yeah, it's a sister, yeah. man. Yeah, sister here, man. Celestial, yeah, celestial goddess. Yeah. Out of here, man. So give her a shout. I out. bet she know what all these mean. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she does. No, she, oh, she tight with it. She tight with it. In fact, um. In fact, I think, do you, can you make beads about, how big are your beads? How about you make small ones? I, I make, I, might, I do one the next size up from these. You ain't got nothing about this, about like, like size of a, like, like a nickel, like dime size, fat ones? No, you don't want to do that. No, 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 she, no, Tammy likes them with her boyfriend, okay? Yeah, enough said. Well, what's she going to do with them? Yeah. Bloop, 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 uh -oh. bloop, bloop. Okay. Tammy. Yeah, Tammy, Tammy, get down with the beads. You put the beads in your boyfriend's booty. Okay. Oh, bloop, God. bloop, 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 bloop. It's like a xylophone. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Nah, yeah, you ain't shit. I ain't shit. But no, Rodney, I appreciate you coming, brother. It was hard to get you here. I'm glad because you, you're always busy, man, but you came through, First brother. First of all, you called me one time when I came. What no, you talking no, about? No, no, no. I called you a couple times, man. You was busy last season. Is that true? Yeah. 
Oh no, not you. It was another black guy. I was gonna get another comedian, another big one. Yeah, yeah, another comedian. My bad. It was said I was trying to call. My bad. You, you came on the first call. My bad. My bad. I called said six times. You, I, just, I just text you, nigga. You here? Thanks for I'm coming. I'm on the way. Nah, I'm fucking with you, man. You my dog, man. I appreciate. It. We tour together. We yes, always sir. run. Up. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I'm gonna tell you, you a beast on stage. If you get a chance to see this gentleman perform, please do. And I'm not just saying that. He's a beast on stage. I can see a lot of comics who might not want to follow you. That's all no, I'm gonna no, say. That is a fact. Yeah, yeah, that is a fact. Okay, want, so it is. You don't want to see none of this. Sometimes I go to L.A. just to remind motherfuckers. Oh, I just, I just did that. <laughs> you I, know, I, I just did that. that. Oh, just, yeah. just for like, let me let y'all know. Y'all can go up here casually if you want to. I'm about to tear this motherfucker apart. Yes, sir. I just did the Laugh Factory. Uh, shout out to my girl Lena. Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, I did pff, three shows out there, packed out. But uh, yeah, I come there to rip it up. You know what I'm saying? Just let people still know, hey. You know, you ain't see me, but I still got it. You I know what I'm saying? It. I still got it. But, hey, I appreciate you coming here, man. Thank you all for watching P.S. Panic Room. You know how we do every week, man. We bring a great, great, great guest. This week was no different, man. Please support it. Don't forget to hit the notification bell or subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, man. The numbers are moving up. We're getting great guests. I appreciate you all watching. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Holla at your boy. Out. Hey, what up, y'all? Roddy Perry, comedian extraordinaire. And I survived P.S. Panic Room. I mean, we had a good time. Yeah, had a good time. Mm. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it.